So welcome to this uh, version of our tutorial. In this episode, we're going to talk about using measurement tools. So in here on the screen, this particular toolbar that we're looking at are considered measured features. So if you look at what we have here, we have a measured point, measured line, measured plane, measured circle, measured round slot, measured square slot, cylinder, cone, sphere, and torus. Now additionally we have this question mark over here which is called measured guess. Measured guess is a pretty neat feature in that whatever you're trying to measure it will guess the feature uh, it doesn't always get it right, but it gets it right a high percentage of the time. Uh, these measured features can be done manually on the part using our controller, and we can just bring up our uh, probe here. So if I put this on measured guess to start with, and we come down here and we measure just a point. So if I just come down here and measure this one point and then accept the, this, you could see that it came up here on the screen as point one. So that's correct. I'm going to get rid of this because it doesn't mean anything to us. Same thing now if I was to measure a line. A line is two points. So say I'm going to drop a point here, bring it over here, drop another point, and then accept it. You can see it comes up as line one over here in our tutorial. I could have done this the same by forcing it to be a line, uh, but the measured guess figures that out pretty easily. Now, definition of a plane are a minimum of three points. Typically they would be a triangle. So if I measure this point, one over here, and one over here, and then accept it, it comes up as you see as plane one. So it got it correct. Now Say, for instance, I just did that and it came up with a circle listed as opposed to a plane. I could come up here to, this will take me a second to find always. There's a special little feature in here called override guess, and it always takes me a second to find it when I'm looking for it. Here it is, an edit override guess. So you can see here to the right it lists circle, line, plane, cylinder, cone, sphere. So if it guessed incorrectly, you can come over here and select the, the correct feature and it will change the tag. So that's a neat way of getting back to where you need to be. Um, so anyway, with all these features we are trying to measure something in particular. We could do it right there on the part as you saw. We can also do it right here with the CAD drawing. If I select this program mode icon right here, then I can make those same marks directly onto the part like that and accept it. And there I've got my plane. A much easier way to program if you have a CAD model to start with. If you do not have the CAD model, then you're working specifically from the part. You have no choice. So these are just some of the many features we have here to work with. Let's talk about a few of these other measured features here. Measured circle requires that you take, I believe, a minimum of three points. However, four or five points would, would certainly help it out more. They all need to be in the same plane. So you can't put two points in one plane and then the other one a little bit further down, it won't recognize that as a circle. 
However, if we're looking at a measured cylinder, for instance, if we're looking at the center of this here, we need to have three hits in the same plane at the top and then three hits below it not in the same plane. Typically, you know, they should all be at slightly different levels in there and then it will know that it is a cylinder. A round slot, we don't really have a good example of it here, but if we did have a round slot, you would want to take several measurements around that slot in the same plane. Same thing with the square slot. Um, for a measured cone, we have an inverted cone on this part, but if you had a, a raised cone or an inverted cone, it works a lot like cylinder. You want to take three around the top at the same plane and then a few others at different levels throughout. Um, it is a tough one uh, for using guess mode in. Uh, I found just from experience that trying to measure a cone with guess mode will often come back with something different. So just be aware that that's the case. Uh, a sphere, typically you want to take a measurement on the top of the sphere and then you want to take several levels around it much like we did uh, when we were working with the calibration sphere. And I don't have any experience measuring a torus at this point. Um, I would say be very diligent to make many measurements around the torus. I would not try that in guess mode. Uh, I don't think it will come back with the right result. Um, but since it's a donut shaped piece, you probably want to make some measurements inside the circle, outside the circle, and then several around on the raised edge of it in order to fully encapsulate that shape. So those are our measured features. Now let's, let's just talk a little bit about some places where you might not be able to get the probe. So you know that this probe has this ball tip on it. It's not going to reach into everything. So for instance, if you were trying to measure the very center of this notch, you can't get the ball all the way in there. It's physically impossible for it to see the very center line of that, the intersection of these two planes. So instead, what you can do or measure these two planes, take several hits up and down these two planes, and then in order to find this intersection, we're going to use a different set of controls on here. These yellow icons are called constructed points. So say for instance, we measure this plane and this plane. We have those two planes in memory. They're right here on our CAD model. So I'll go ahead and just, um, we'll just go ahead and do this. We're in program mode. I'm going to take several hits on this plane here. And I'm going to accept it. And it comes up as plane one. I'm going to go to the second plane surface here and take several points on it. And accept that. And now we have plane two. Now I want to find this line right in the center here. So I'm going to come up here to a constructed line and I get this dialog box. What I'm going to do is select plane one and plane two. And then in here, there is a feature called intersection. If I create it, you can see here we now have listed line one. Line one is the intersection of those two planes. That's our way of measuring that. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> you could do the same thing with a point or a plane or a circle. So say for instance I measured every single one of these tiny little circles in here. But I want to know are the center of all of those holes in a perfect circle. I can construct a circle from all of those that I previously measured. And then when I report that out later, we can determine how circular that was. We can also determine if that circle is in the right position compared to our origin. So there 
are many benefits to this. Okay, so we've talked about measured features, we've talked about constructed features, now we're going to talk about auto features. So these are in purple, violet, whatever you want to call it. We have auto vector point, auto line, auto plane, auto circle, auto cylinder, cone, and sphere. Auto features are a little different um, than a measured feature or a constructed feature in that you are no longer telling it exactly where to measure. You're not putting points on the model and then getting a response from them. Instead, you're just locating the feature and you're telling it that you want to measure it. So, for instance, let's look at auto cylinder. Notice when I pop that open, I get this big dialog box here full of all sorts of stuff. It could be a little confusing. Um, but the, the concept is that we want to tell it that our cylinder, let's say for instance, is right here. You see now on the screen there are a number of lines uh, associated with that. Those are all the places that it's currently telling it it wants to measure inside the cylinder. Now it's a little bit tough to look at. Um, you can't really see clearly where it is you're going to get that measurement until you try it out. But if we kind of rotate the model here a little bit, you could see that there is a line just below the top of the cylinder and there are three that go down. So, in the dialog box we have the basic location of the center of this cylinder. We have how we're looking at this part from the view of the probe and we have the angle at which this feature is located. We also have here a nominal diameter of this feature of 30 millimeters and a length of 10. We have a start angle of 0 and an end angle of 360 which makes sense as it's cylindrical. Um, and then there's a whole host of little tiny boxes in here which um, all have a meaning. Um, we're only interested really in a couple of these features. Now, let's see if I can find the ones that I need. Not too much trouble here. Oh, I'm sorry, these ones down the bottom here. So, if we look at this contact paths property, what it's telling me is that I want three hits per level at a depth of one millimeter from the surface, an ending offset of three millimeters from the bottom, and we want three levels of measurements through there. And pitch would be if we were bringing the probe in at a certain pitch angle, which we can't control with a manual wrist. Um, things to consider. Your ball is a certain size. If you don't have a big enough ending offset, it's going to hit the bottom of the cylinder. So you have to make sure that that ending offset is high enough that the probe can actually fit in there. This depth from the top, one millimeter is probably fine. Three hits per level means you're going to make three hits around it, and you're going to go three levels of information deep. So you're going to make nine measurements. Additionally, it's going to come up and locate the edge of this uh, feature before it starts making measurements inside of it. The only way to know whether this really works correctly or not is to run a test on it. So it has a little button here at the bottom that says test, and this will allow you to come in and actually see if it works or not or whether the probe crashes into something. These can be a little tricky to run. Uh, they're not always easy. Sometimes it looks on paper like it's going to work just fine, but then it will crash over and over and over again. And sometimes you just have to resort to making the measurements manually. But if you're trying to program up a lot of features really quickly, uh, this is a great way of getting a lot of that done. Otherwise, you're in here making all those separate little hits inside the cylinder. So since that worked just fine, 
I can now create the feature. So it's as simple as that, but it can always also be very difficult. Doing this cone or this sphere might be really tricky. You sort of have to play with these, and each one of these has a different looking dialog box associated with it. You have to make sure that you use it correctly, um, or you will not have good results when you run your final program. So this is just a quick taste of some of these. You really have to try them out for yourself and, and get good at them and understand them before you can move along with your programming. So this is a quick overview of some of the measurement features. Uh, in our next lesson, we're going to start to show how we report out some of these measurements.